Hello, it's Pastor Tim, and it is my pleasure to bring to you the uh, gospel lesson and the message for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, which is July the 18th. A couple of brief things before we get started with the video. Uh, one is that tomorrow, uh, July the uh, Sunday, July the 18th, uh, we are going to have the Pause Praise Band be leading worship. Uh, we had to switch the schedule around a little bit, so the, the praise band is going to be leading worship uh, this upcoming Sunday, tomorrow, the July 18th, and then one week from today, we are still planning to have an outdoor service. That outdoor service will be the only service that Sunday, July 25th, and it's going to be at 9.30 in the morning, so we just wanted to make sure that you were aware of the, the slight switch in the schedule there. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And this is the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and then arrived ahead of them. As they went ashore, they saw, he saw a great crowd, and Jesus had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed the loaves and gave them to his disciples before the people to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There are basically two types of drivers. The first type are those who see the fuel needle on E and say, it's okay, I've got 10 more miles. The second type see the needle dipping down toward half and say, better get gas now. We all know which kind we are. I have always been the first type, the type to stay on E for a little while. But after a few close calls, I am ready to convert. I'll admit that. The closest gas station to our house is three miles in the opposite direction from church. And the closest one to church is four miles in the opposite direction from home. We are in a gas desert in the village of Lake Ann. It's just too easy for me to put it off and because I don't want to go out of my way and take the extra time. But on the other hand, it takes even longer when I have to borrow Laura's car, go fill up the gas can, 
and bring it back. So it's time for a change for me. A good friend of mine who served on a Navy sub told me that he never passes up a chance to eat, to sleep, to go to the bathroom, or to fill up the gas tank. That really makes a lot of sense, but for me it would require a mental shift, a shift from putting things off till later and planning for the future to seizing opportunities now as they come. Our gospel story is about a similar shift for Jesus' disciples. They're known as apostles now. Jesus has sent them out. An apostle is the Greek word for one who is sent. So he has sent them out two by two to share good news about God's kingdom and to heal people and to save people's lives and to cast out evil spirits in his name. And it's all going well. In fact, a little too well. They've been so busy that they haven't even had a chance to eat. Their physical and mental tanks are on empty. Jesus says, come away to a deserted place by yourselves and rest a while. It was strangely difficult as I was looking through images to share in worship. It was hard for me to track down a picture of Jesus and his disciples simply resting. The Gospels say that they did it, but not many artists have taken on that image of Jesus and his disciples simply resting. Even in today's text, they don't get to rest very long. The crowds end up meeting them on the other side of the lake, but at least when the chance for a quiet, peaceful boat ride comes, they're able to take it. On the other side of the lake, Jesus is mobbed by a crowd of people who are spiritually adrift. It says they are like sheep without a shepherd. They know nothing of his message. He has his work cut out for him. Even the disciples whom he teaches full time oftentimes will miss the whole point of his teachings. So how can he possibly teach this crowd of people everything that they need to know? But then when the chance for a single day of teaching comes, Jesus takes it. Then the sun gets low. The people are getting hungry. And you have to understand that it's not as simple as we may think because people in the first century don't just go out and have picnics. Eating happens indoors. There's no such thing as coolers or refrigerators to keep the keep the food fresh so food prep has to be happening indoors especially if that food is going to be ritually clean the disciples are fretting because for too many people even a half a year's wages won't be enough to buy food for them all jesus says you give them something to eat what they have is five loaves and two fish Jesus looks up to heaven, blesses and breaks the loaves, and passes them out. And lo and behold, it's enough. In fact, it's more than enough. They collect 12 baskets full of leftovers. When the chance comes to feed the people for free, to not just tell them, but to show them what the economy of God's reign actually looks like, Jesus takes it. They take what they've got, and God makes more out of it. A chance to rest. A chance to teach. A chance to feed. None of them seem like enough at the time, but when they take the chances as they come, they find that God always provides enough for today. Always. Never pass up a gas station, whether it's literal or spiritual. Just stop a moment and seize the opportunities that God gives. I can't emphasize enough how differently Jesus and the first generation of Christians perceived time than how we perceive it today. There was an urgency to everything they did and said. 
Jesus knows and proclaims from the very beginning that the moment is now, that God's reign is breaking into the world now, and that if people don't respond now, they're going to miss it. You've probably heard me talk before about the two Greek words for time. There's one word, chronos, which means regular, linear, day-to-day time. And then there's kairos, which is a holy, transformative moment when God's eternity breaks into our lives unexpectedly. Jesus and his disciples and the first generation or two of the church see themselves as living in one big, urgent, unfolding kairos moment for the world as God's grace is bursting in. But after a few generations of urgently expecting Jesus' return within their lifetime, the church switches modes. They kind of settle in for the long haul and into chronos time. It's time to organize. It's time to create an institution, to structure power, and to build buildings and big cathedrals and hire staff and maintain the religious machine. The Kairos moments still come, but we get a little bit less adept at seeing God's action in our lives and being ready to seize the chance to take part in God's reign, which unexpectedly shows up today. That shakes things up too much to seize on these Kairos moments. It requires repentance and change. And institutions tend not to like change. It's too easy to put off seizing the opportunities God gives us because they don't fit into the structures and the routines that we've already built. It's too easy to only live in chronos time and not notice a kairos when it comes. As much chaos as this last year and uh, the, 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 this current year have thrown at us, there have been opportunities within it. It's been a kairos. When your life is turned upside down, you get a different view of it. You get a chance to start asking, why? Why was I doing it this way? Why haven't I been taking all my vacation? What's stopping me from calling the people I love more often? What's so important that I couldn't just spend five or ten minutes a day with God, just a few verses from the Bible and a moment of silent prayer? Why gather on Sunday morning with a bunch of relative strangers if we still don't know each other well enough or trust each other well enough that we will have real and deep conversations outside of Sunday morning and that we'll grow and become more like Jesus during the rest of the week. Most importantly, why would we ever pass up a spiritual gas station when our tanks are so clearly on empty? Why would we soldier on and choose to learn nothing from this vast kairos moment that's happening in the world and in our lives? Why would we act tough instead of asking for help? Why would we not take the rest and offer the learning and the good spiritual food that God offers today? Why would we ever pass up the gift of Jesus' own body and blood, the meal of God's grace and forgiveness every single time it's offered, even if it looks a little different than what we're used to? Why would we keep running on an empty tank when God desires nothing more than to fill us up? I confess to you, my siblings in Christ, sometimes I pass up little gifts from God and I pass up the opportunity to share little gifts from God to others because I underestimate them. 
I underestimate what God can do with the little things, the little gifts. I underestimate how much God can do with just one day of rest, even an hour of rest. Just one sit down with scripture. Just one word of affirmation and love offered to an LGBTQ youth who has been told all their lives that Christians hate them. Just one bite of bread. Just one sip of wine. Too often, I let these Kairos moments pass because they seem too small. Kind of like a short boat ride. Kind of like an afternoon of teaching. Kind of like a few loaves and two fish. But every single time I do take the opportunities that God gives, every single time I'm blown away by how much God can do with it. I'm amazed by how much God always fills up our tanks just at the right time, just in the right way. I'm reminded that, of course, God will be glad to fill up my tank a few miles down the road if I really feel like I need to push on. But it's never a bad idea to get together and stop now and maybe experience grace again. Amen.